Hi, I'm Matt. Hey there, I'm Bianca. And in this episode, we are going to be telling you about our trip to Cap Diag de France. So stay tuned, we're the Traveling Swingers. So this is exciting. This is so exciting. You know, we've done 90 some odd videos about the lifestyle and this is the very first one where I get to show my nipples. <laughs> is that what you're excited about? Here I'm like this build up of we're in France and all this like lovely stuff and no, you get to show your nipples. That's right. We went uh, shopping and uh, you uh, got to pick out shopping. whatever you thought was sexy enough for me. and. Uh, and they yeah, had a lot of these mesh fine. European shirts. Love it. I'm going to make him buy a full new wardrobe. I told him you need to just wear this every day. <laughs> yeah. So I never get to shop for you. Like, I mean, we'll buy you like nice button downs and that kind of stuff. But the sexy stuff, like the lingerie for men, which ladies is super fun to do. Um, I really enjoyed shopping for you. I could have done a bit more. Yeah, yeah. And, and the shopping, let me tell you. Oh my gosh, I have to keep interrupting you. No, that's fine. Well, I'm going to interrupt you. So this <laughs> is part one of our series about our trip to France. We uh, so we actually have quite a few videos that are going to be coming up on this one. So stay tuned. Make sure that you subscribe. Uh, but this is part one where we are in... Cap d'Agda. Cap d'Agda, which is on the southeastern side of France, along the beach, along the Mediterranean. Oh, the Mediterranean. Oh, it was so beautiful. <laughs> Yes, we did actually get to dip our toes in the Mediterranean for the first time. Yep. It was uh, it was amazing. You hadn't done that before. No, so I haven't. We kissed. We kissed in the Mediterranean. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we got out because it was cold. It was really cold. <laughs> <laughs> so on day one, mm -hmm. uh, we arrived at uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport in uh, Paris uh, mm -hmm. from Seattle, uh, which was a very long flight, uh, yes. 10 or so hours. And then uh, we took a flight from uh, Paris to Montpellier, mm -hmm. which is uh, about a, only just about a 25 minute drive, maybe a 45 minute drive from uh, the town of Cap d'Agda. Mm -hmm. And uh, the group that we are with, uh, Swinger Open Poly, uh, or SOP Lifestyle Productions, uh, they had they put this whole event together and it has, well, how many people? Probably... I think it's 10. Ten couples? ten couples in total uh, from all over the world that met together in Montpellier and uh, they rented some vans and, and brought us over to Cap d'Agda. Now Cap d'Agda is, if you're not familiar with it, a what they call a swinger mecca, the swinger mecca. Okay, this is a place that if you're in the lifestyle, you should go at least one time in your life. It's like a bucket list thing, you guys. You gotta check it off. It's amazing. It's so. Exactly. Nothing like it. So, so Cap d'Agda is a naturist village. village. Okay, so it's huge for just this giant area that's closed off that people can be naked. And everywhere. Like, everywhere. Including like the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or walking around or sitting with, in, in a restaurant, whatever it might be, you can just be buck naked. Or as sexy as you want. want. Like you can wear this to the grocery store. Mm, or this. <laughs> or, or this. That. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> without, without looking too odd. Yes. Uh, and but I think that's important to say is you can be as dressed or undressed as you want. There are definitely people walking around in normal everyday clothes, swimsuits, um, just regular shorts and t-shirts. And then there are people that are buck ass naked. So mm. depending on your level of comfortability, you are welcome to do whichever level you're at you know if you just want to go topless that's fine if you just want to wear something mesh that's fine too so i think that's important to say because people do some people are a little un, in the lifestyle are a little uncomfortable with the fully nude especially like maybe day one maybe you need to warm up to it or whatever but um there were a few people who were on the trip with us that were like a little bit nervous coming because they thought the minute they passed through the gates they had to strip everything off and stay that way and while people like matt are thrilled to do that <laughs> <laughs> Other people need to warm up a little bit. So um, that's just something that I wanted to throw out there that if you are someone who is like, well, I can never go there because I don't want to be naked all the time. You can still come. 
you can wear clothes and, and get down when you're comfortable. So like I said, it is a naturist village. However, a large percentage of the population that is here are in the lifestyle. And there are specific hotels dedicated to the lifestyle. The hotel that we are at... Jardin. Jardin, yes. And Jardin de Babylon, de Babylon. which is next door, uh, are swinger hotels. Right. So if you come here, basically, that's kind of the goal of that's these specific hotels. Although there are many, many people in this entire village that are also lifestyle uh, that might be staying at one of the other hotels or they might be local to France and, or to, within the area and they kind of come on down for a night out at one of the many, many restaurants, bars, clubs. swinger clubs, lots of swinger clubs. Uh, and so there just are a lot of lifestyle people here. Um, but unlike a lot of the lifestyle resorts that we've been to and that we have reviews on in many of the other videos that you can definitely find uh, on on the internet uh, about some of the other ones like hedonism for example in Jamaica uh, where sex happens a little bit but it's kind of frowned upon in public but it still happens mm -hmm. here it's kind of a just do what you want <laughs> wherever you want outside of the pool don't do it at yeah. the pool, in the pool. Don't yeah. do it in the water. Um, but we're sitting by the pool and you look to the left, there's a whole row of lounge chairs, lounge chairs where people are just having sex. Just not, this woman sitting there. Just not rowdy like, sex, kind of lazy sex. It was really nice. Like it's sunny <laughs> and warm and you're just kind of laying there. And it's funny because you'll watch, you'll put, watch people and the women will just like have their hand on their dick, just like, you know, just. She's reading a book, just kind of like do 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 do. He's reading a book or whatever, and then all of a sudden, she kind of like rolls over and he just slides it in, <laughs> and it's just like lazy sex. It doesn't sound like there's any coming or anything like that. It's very quiet, very proper, and then he's just like, okay, I'm done. No, he actually, back over and pulls out his book again. Actually, someone else had commented in our group that there was this couple that was having sex all day long, like yeah. for hours. Like they would just kind of stop for a little bit, he'd massage her and then they'd go at it and go at it and it was it was literally for hours they were having sex. Uh, you know, one of those, you want to high five the guy, but he's busy. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but there's just so much sex everywhere you look that it's, it, as Americans, it's mind blowing. Yes. It's absolutely mind blowing because it's just, so uh, rampant. I don't know if that sounds like a negative word, but it's 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 just it's just everywhere, yes. and it's a, such a very sexually charged atmosphere that it's 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 wow wow. So um, uh, on the first night that we got here, mm -hmm. uh, we decided to check out Glamour, which uh, is a which is the premier lifestyle club in Cap Dagda. Uh, it is huge huge and beautiful it is the largest lifestyle club we've been to and we've been to quite a few of them uh including uh, uh club sapphire in seattle uh, uh freedom makers freedom makers in, in southern california uh which is also a huge one i mean there, there's just so many of them uh and but this is bigger and it yeah so you go in and it's you know a beautiful exquisite nightclub on the main floor uh with lasers and lights and and stripper you know poles, huge bars stripper poles area. they had a they had actually had a shower in there on stage so people could shower while other people watch like as part of and dance and mm -hmm. women could go in there and do their do their things or i guess couples could of course uh and uh, it was it was very very entertaining to watch mm -hmm. uh and then you go downstairs and the playrooms are the set up um the best way i've described it to people <laughs> i don't know if it's the best way but have you ever been to one of those um haunted houses that fun happen house. like a fun house that like you know companies kind of create that come to your town in, in, the, in october where it's a lot of like temporary walls with little secret cubby holes and like little places out of the way that you can just kind of hide there was a lot of that uh where it was just like you'd go behind a hallway and it's like oh there's just this like little room with mirrors in it and like over here mattress and 
yeah, and over here is a little room that you could uh, you could probably fit probably eight people on this one specific mattress because it's kind of an interesting angle. And over here is the glory hole section, which we've never dealt with. This is the first time we've been we've used those. We yes. we saw those uh, at uh, in California and and in a few other uh, places, but this was the first time we'd used it uh, yeah. with others yeah. and uh, that was fun yeah that was fun uh, if you ever get a chance to use a glory hole, we you know we we actually over the years we've talked about glory holes and we've both been kind of shrugging going eh, it doesn't I sound like it's something yeah. um, but that was really cool time. that was yeah. really cool yeah um, uh, I highly recommend it <laughs> uh, so yeah that that uh, that was glamour and that was a beautiful beautiful uh, place that definitely recommend it it ended up being, um, uh, I believe it was 60 euros for a couple and 25 for a single woman. And you got two free drinks. Oh, yeah, two free that drinks. That included yeah. two drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and, okay, and so then the next day. We went to Jeux de Mal. Oh, look at you all sounding sexy with your French. <laughs> uh, which is another lifestyle club. Uh, you know, we wanted to kind of test them all out and then, it's, and then, Part I believe probably will be part three of this video series. We'll be in Paris and we'll be going and we'll be going to numerous lifestyle clubs there. So stay tuned. Uh, but at this club, it was a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. but it was a little more dance focused. Yes. Uh, there was uh, there were again poles. There was a cage. You were in the cage. I was for having fun in the cage. Quite some time. <laughs> I got a little sweaty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was uh, it was it was fun to watch and it was fun to dance and it was fun to to hang out with a lot of uh, a lot of the French people that don't speak our language and we don't speak theirs unfortunately you speak a little bit of French um, but that didn't really seem to be too much of an issue mm -hmm. um, um, there is you know the international language of sex I guess <laughs> is is, uh, is is very true uh, and it, it is interesting because Unlike what we see in the United States, where uh, there are, are kind of two different groups when you go to a lifestyle club. There's, there's the ones, or even on the websites, whatever it might be, where you talk to someone, you have conversations. If you kind of connect that way, then the hands start moving and you go to the back. Uh, and then the other side of the group are the, that you see as well are the people that go on the dance floor and they start dancing and with their as a couple when then they get closer to another couple and hands start moving and it gets closer and closer and they go to the back. It does seem that here, at least in Cap Dagda, as we've seen so far, uh, that's that's primarily the way that people swing. Um, there's very little talking yes. that goes on between couples beforehand. Again, as far as what we've seen, and even at the at the clubs, even that were uh, quite quiet enough areas that you could talk to others, like you had pointed out that there was. A section at the nightclub where everybody just kind of sat there as a couple and looked at each other. Yeah, it was kind of like a high school dance. It was kind of yeah, <laughs> junior high school dance. Junior high school where nobody wants to talk to each <laughs> other at talked, all. Yeah. But then once they got on the dance floor, then suddenly it became very very sexually yeah, charged. Yeah, she changed. Mm -hmm. It was it went from like this like nervous, scared, I don't want to talk to anybody energy to like normal, fun, sexy dance energy. Yes, yes. So yes. it was it was interesting to see the shift. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe they just need a little alcohol in their system to get going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and yeah, so you know we really enjoyed the clubs uh, and we're looking forward to seeing what else is out there. Oh, sure. uh, and uh, let's see what else. Oh, I was gonna say when um, one of the days we went to during the day um, to Glamour, the hotel. They have a pool party oh. slash foam party. Oh my gosh, if you have the opportunity, if you come here, you have to go to the foam party. It is so much fun. We were, I was nervous. I didn't really want to go because I was like, I don't know what to expect. What is this foam? Like, I don't know. And I was like, when in France, you know, like how often am I going to be here and try everything, right? You don't have to stay was my thinking as we can go there. And if I hate it, we can leave. Well, we were there for quite a while. <laughs> it was so much fun. Yes. Um, being in the foam, it was like at times up to our shoulders. Oh, I fell into it. You couldn't see in, me. Like you couldn't back, see me you couldn't see his head, his face. <laughs> um, and just they, like it was just this big, almost like an empty pool 
that you were in and then they would just fill it with foam and people were just dancing and everybody had smiles on their faces there were people in there having sex mm -hmm. and there were people in there just kind of like sexily it felt really good to like rub your body on um on someone because mm -hmm. they were like all like slippery and so you just like would like wiggle back and forth and dance and it was hard not to smile and have fun while yeah and it was a very touchy feely group uh, as we mentioned, the, the, the touching that, that seems to be very prevalent. And this was at Glamour Beach. So they have two different places. They have the Glamour at night, and they have Glamour Beach, which is right next door, which is this basically big pool party. And uh, so, yeah, the foam was amazing. And then right outside of the foam area is a pool and a big dance area. And uh, we got, uh, our group got bottle service and, you know, uh, a big, big bed, to, big bed right, like, right right above right. everyone else to kind of view over the crowd. Everything. And they would get, like, a bunch of people in the pool and um, like shake up champagne bottles and squirt them all over everybody. No, they actually had these big champagne like machine guns. They had that too. And they would, uh, you know, they'd get everybody together because, you know, always throwing out the t-shirts and hats and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff and then shoot them with these really cool uh, champagne things, the champagne pouring guns. pouring it all over women, mm -hmm. all over their asses, and then men would be like, Drinking it from that, and there was like just champagne. <laughs> again, and there was just sex everywhere, and it was perfectly okay for there to be sex. And this was, you know, like two in the afternoon, and there were just people everywhere just doing it, and uh, uh, in every position, and every angle, and everywhere with either their spouse or with someone they just met. You could clearly see there were a lot of strangers that were having sex, uh, and it was it was it was phenomenal. Again, very very mind blowing. So then we decided to go shopping. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of shopping for adult type things in yes as soon as you think that you can't find any more stores there's another area with more stores mm -hmm. yeah like, it's it's amazing it's incredible I really only bought two out three outfits <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, I thought about buying some shoes but I was concerned about getting them home so I didn't buy any shoes because I didn't see any that like I was super excited about yeah. I would have had I found some but I mean, I could have bought several pair, but I was, my suitcase is already at capacity. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, there are a lot of clothing stores specifically sexually charged that have, you know, the, the ridiculously skimpy outfits, but also, you know, dildos, and they actually saw like a, a an Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. Tower vibrator dildo, which is pretty amazing. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that, hard to describe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just tip like the Eiffel Tower. Uh, and... There's just so much of that here, and actually the prices were reasonable. Yeah. I was surprised. I thought yeah. that actually they'd be quite a bit higher, and uh, good quality. Unlike mm -hmm. the stuff that you generally see at home when you buy it online, and it's kind of the one-time sex use, yeah. and then it just kind of falls apart on you. Yeah. This is actually some really good clothing that mm -hmm. uh, that is, again, reasonably. I mean, light. you could come here literally in your airplane clothes. And nothing else. Mm -hmm. Maybe an overnight bag with like your toiletries in it. That's all you, you could buy everything you need here or wear nothing at all. Right. It's pretty cool. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just be naked and go, go shop for, for at the, uh, the bread place. What do they call that? Pen? No, or where you buy patisserie? bread. Patisserie. Patisserie. Yeah. Where you, yeah. <laughs> the, where the giant lines of people that every morning that go and stand for fresh bread mm -hmm. and that type of thing. And people were buck croissant. naked or looking sexy. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. So, um, yeah. So we definitely highly recommend this town. Oh, for sure. Uh, again, bucket yeah, try list. Try it once. At try least. it once uh, and enjoy yourself. Even if you don't speak the language, that's really not too much of an issue. Uh, that we thought might be a little bit more, but it, it really, honestly, wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. Uh, it, and it's it's a very very beautiful town, and just there's nothing like it on earth no. at all. So definitely want to come here. Yeah. Uh, and so today we're actually going to be hopping on a train. We're going to be going to Bordeaux, yes. uh, which is a few hours from here. And uh, we're so going, excited. we're going to be renting a 15th century castle uh, with our group. We have the entire castle to ourselves. Uh, and there, for... I'm going to be taking pictures with my, I have a crown, jewels, <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> exactly. So that'll be amazing. So, you know, stay tuned. Look for part two. Uh, that's going to be coming up. And uh, make sure you subscribe, of course, because we are going all over the world and yes. showing you swinging all over the world. So yeah, you definitely want to do that. And uh, anything else you want to say? Uh, no. Something in French? Yeah, well, not when you put me on the spot. Like okay, that. well then. <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Thanks for watching. Mwah.